Welcome to week three of On Top of the Cage. Game day, man. Game day. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'm ready. Dan, Dan's going to the game. We'll get into that in a bit. Dan's just back from youth football practice. I'm sure we'll do that update uh, at some point in time during our what I refer to as the introduction. It is, uh, it's warm out tonight. It was 84 degrees when I rolled in here, and it's still humid. It is humid. It is the fall equinox. Yep. Starting tomorrow, and Mother Nature's not messing around. We, we thought, hey, it's fall. We're going to drop you guys by like 25 to 30 degrees tomorrow. Birthday shout out to my mom. Her birthday's tomorrow. That's awesome. Yep. All right, so we got that one. I missed, I mean, we're kind of going back and forth in between this stuff. Uh, I missed my sister Carmen's birthday, which was just yesterday, so it's not a bad miss. And uh, happy birthday to Carmen. Hey, and she, her birthday's on the same day as my nephew Pierce. Pierce, Pierce, Pierce got mentioned too. My, in uh, Chicago. My, oh, nice yeah. place to live. My nephew, Andrew, which is Carmen's uh, son. He's just a barrel of monkeys of fun. Wears his hat on backwards. Likes to drink beer. Tell jokes. Uh, his birthday was Saturday, I believe. So, happy birthday to Andrew as well. We're getting Holy through shit, all we that. We should have him on the show. Might as well do the mistakes part of the show. Uh, mistakes? <laughs> yeah, the mistakes in regards to, uh, we missed a couple of birthdays here. Uh uh, and it's somewhat become a tradition for me to rewatch this show on Friday night because there's not a whole lot going on sports-wise. No. I did rewatch it, and it was it was fine for the most part. There was a moth flying around, and we missed a couple of birthdays, as I already mentioned. Um, the Denver-Houston game, which was two thirds away through the slate, was an absolute debacle. I, I got the record wrong for Denver. Uh, you were harping on me about talking about fantasy football too much. I wasn't understanding what you were saying. I missed. Spoke in regards to my joke about tattoo. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, you're looking at me like I'm challenged. You yeah. Know? But I, the joke was supposed to be, what is tattoo's favorite M&M's? And I said, what is tattoo's favorite peanuts? <laughs> and and you're, you're looking at me like I'm stupid. But yeah. anyway, what are tattoo's favorite M&M's? The plane. The plane. <laughs> yes, it is. So, uh, yeah. Holy that, that's, shit. That, that, that was the extent of it. But I was, I was concerned when I was watching the show because there was like six games left to pick last week. And I don't know if it was the beer getting to me, the alcohol getting to me, or whatever the situation. I'm like, holy shit, we got six games left. This is going to be a train wreck. I feel like I rallied. It wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad. Yeah, so. you kicked my ass last week. I did. Before we'll get into the records. we had different. I mentioned the fall equinox uh, coming, which is September 22 tomorrow when you guys will see the show. I mentioned the temperature drop. Have you uh, done anything in regards to fall stuff? We've got mums, corn stalks, uh, anything like that? I have one Pumpkins. mum. One mum I planted because something died, and mm. I replaced it with uh, one mum. That's it. There used to be a tradition over here going to the pumpkin patch when the kids were younger. That yeah. doesn't necessarily happen anymore. Um, but we get some decorations here. But my wife has, like. We well, already said Halloween's already set up inside. Oh, so. it's been set up. And, and I made I cut a deal with Ethan, who's wild, my, one of my kids. Uh, wild about Halloween and, and this stuff and I don't know when I come back from work there may be weird shit out in the front yard I don't know I hope not but that may happen if he notices that it's the first day of fall tomorrow so we'll see um, what do you mean weird shit you know that we have more Halloween decorations than the average person yeah he apparently has Halloween decorations to put outside nice I don't know if it's going to be tombstones or what the hell is going to happen out there I'm hoping it's not too wild I think the lawn service is supposed to come tomorrow we'll see how, oh, the, yeah, how they don't conflict the with lawn that service. Um, yeah I think we'll probably do a little bit more of that this weekend although I came home and there was three pumpkins um, you know out front and I think my wife went to Acme one of the local grocery stores and she had told Dan before we went on right on, before we went on set that there was a sale on pumpkins so anyway I did buy one mum so far. It was an orange mum, and I put a little, it's out here, probably just outside of you, Wingshot. <clears throat> That's the same color I bought. Orange? Yeah. Yeah, Chicago Bears. I put a little put Chicago Bears stone that I have next to it. Thought it was going to bring good luck Sunday night. Shit did not work at all. So, um, anyway, uh, you made some more upgrades to your garage uh, this week. Well, with the new beer selection on tap? Yes. Yeah. Dan has a kegerator in his garage. It has two taps, right? Yep. We have one tap is a, a platform brewery. They're Cleveland Brewery. Owned by Anheuser-Busch currently. Yes, Anheuser-Busch bought them, and they have a pink Martian. It's a sour beer, so that is Dan's a fan of sours. Tap. 
And then Saucy Brew Works is a, I, they're another local company. They are Cleveland, Beachwood. Uh, we got Boo Thang on Boo Thang, tap. yes. Which and I think stands for girlfriend. I don't know what it stands for, but. Yeah, Boo Thang is like maybe your side piece or girlfriend. I'm not sure. Somebody will correct us, I'm sure. It's on tap. And I think we, I swear we did that beer on the show. We did. The, the can present, they have a good can present. They do, they're very Two good. Two people with pumpkin head. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, yeah, it looks good. And it tastes pretty good. Yeah, we have a. That's Needs awesome. To be a little bit colder though for that kind of beer. You know, eighty degrees doesn't want you make you want to have a pumpkin flavored beer. No, but it drops. And I tell you what, the heaters are probably coming out this weekend uh, in the garage. You know, I spend a lot of time out here in what I affectionately refer to as the Flying Turtle Lounge. I mean, literally, the lows tomorrow are mid forties. So uh, it's been a it's a drastic change. Mother Nature said we're ready. I guess we have to be ready. So I don't know. That's the way it goes. There's supposed to be thunderstorm in here, and we got nothing. Do you want to do? That's right. We are supposed to have some weather tonight. We'll see. I don't think we've ever had thunderstorms. Uh, you know, while the show's going on, it'd be nice to get a couple of boomers. We'll no, see. yeah. I mean, there's supposed awesome. to be a line of sh- thunderstorms when we were doing this, and there. That's right. We'll be like, that's the pick close. you want when, when yeah. the big bolt yeah. comes down right there. That's the one. So, you want to do the beer review? You want to talk Absolutely. about last Absolutely. Beer we review. We found it, John from North Carolina. John from North Carolina is Mark. The mechanic's good buddy, yep. and he asked us to do a beer called Voodoo Ranger Juice Force IPA. Dan, talk about it. I, the only thing oh. I know about it, it's 9.5% alcohol in this thing. I couldn't find the pounders, but we got a six-pack of these. So. It comes from the new Belgium Brewing Company, which is based in Fort Collins, Colorado. I did a little bit of research on this stuff. Uh, they're pro- I, I would venture a guess, or I would say, and maybe I'm wrong, but... I think New Belgium is most likely the most sure popular you? nationally craft beer company out there. Mm. It smells, yeah, it smells good. Oh, it's tasty. It's fruity. So what Holy happened? Hell, you like it? Juice Force IPA. Man, you could get in trouble pounding these. There's a lot of orange or tangerine or yeah. something. I feel no, that that's good. That. It's smooth. It goes down. It's not heavy. It's only 12 nine, ounces. We might have to go through two. Nine and a half. Yeah, Hold on, I'm slow. Oh, God. Um, New this Belgium. This could be a fun show. New Belgium. Um, what happened was this couple from Fort Collins, Colorado, who have actually been to that town, and it's just an awesome town. Um, college town, kind of, if you will. Uh, Colorado State University is there. But they were young in the early 90s and went on a European trip to Belgium, bike riding trip. You know, they... Notice all the craft beers. They started something in their basement and became probably the largest national craft beer company out there. Her name is Kim Jordan, who is a was the owner. They recently sold the company for three hundred and fifty some million dollars. Get the hell out of here! Yes, I mean they're a big deal. Um, so how did they come up with Voodoo Ranger? Because they have Voodoo Ranger other kinds of beers. I thought Voodoo Ranger was the brewery. No, New Belgium is the brewery. Um, they are so large that they started another brewery in Asheville, North Carolina, which is another incredibly gorgeous town. So, Actually, I, my time in Fort Collins was just one day with my brother-in-law, Paul, if I'm not mistaken. I'm almost positive. Um, we went there, and we were drinking beer early. And I had a breakfast beer, and I don't mean by, like, the timing. Like, literally, the, the, the fucking beer tastes like a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. Get out of here. It was awesome. They have cobblestone streets. Fort Collins is gorgeous. I would love to go back. I uh, have not been there since early early 90s this is a good beer i like this one. we like it we like it good, all right good pick john good suggestion very good and we're certainly open to suggestions going forward uh last week you notice there's no shots on the table dan screwed the pooch again um dan went five and eleven uh on the year he's 12 and 20 uh i went nine and seven dan i only picked four games different last week i happen to get all of them right dan got them wrong I am 18 and 14 on the year. I wrote actually the games down because I thought Dan was going to protest and say you're full of shit, your math is wrong, or something like that. No, and we talked about he's it. Not, he's not contesting it right now. Um, as far as the elephant picks go, we were both on Cleveland, which yeah. looked like a dead set winner shit. until catastrophe struck. Are we going to talk about that, or can we do the youth football update before I get pissed? No, do that. youth football. Now let's talk about the theme of last week because it kind of ties into what happened with Cleveland. What's going on with the youth football team? We won. Squared your record then, right? Two and two. Halftime, it was eight 
to six. We went in with a two point lead. Sounds good. Quarterback had a little finger injury on his non throwing hand. Fullback got hurt. Both came back in the second half. Final score was 32 to 12. Well, you put it on them. Wait, what happened? Halftime adjustments? Coaching change? Of team? course. <laughs> yes. There's a big coaching. Dan's a big believing believer. You, you've seen it in the lines and how he picks it. He's a big believer in coaches. Sounds like he might have won the coaching battle in the second half. Maybe some adjustments? Yeah. I 32 did. points. That's a lot of points in the second half. 24 points? Yeah. In the last two weeks, our, all our points have been scored by the quarterback. You throw the ball crazy. at all? We try to, but the line breaks down and the kid just runs forever. Yeah, I've seen I, – I was out at the one game, you know that, and uh, he's a pretty good athlete at the at the QB1 position for Dan's team. So, um, week two, recap kind of. The storyline was the unbelievable collapses by multiple oh teams. Oh, my God. Um, I'll start with the Raiders, who had a 20 to nothing lead on the Arizona Cardinals and lost the game in overtime. Then the Baltimore Ravens, unaffectionately known as the Ratbirds. Ratbirds. On this show, at least. Uh, surrendered a 21-point lead going into the fourth quarter to the in-laws teams. In-laws team, there were a lot of e e es going on. They're very excited. We'll certainly talk about them. They probably have the marquee game on the schedule this week. Um, and then, your Cleveland football Browns, who were our elephant pick, which wildly pissed me off. Personally, it hurt my bank account as well. I, I, I was none too happy at all. Um... There was a, just a series of mistakes. You want to talk about? Uh, I mean, my God! Well, well first of all, you got out. That I don't even want to hear that. That's the bullshit, freaking excuse. You're up 13 points with one minute and 55 seconds left. The, the miss extra point. The miss extra large. point hurt, but still, That's, you're up 13. Mistake two. That's fine. Blown coverage. You got out coached. I, I mean, seriously. I, Lose the onside play, kick. Play four deep coverage and stop them underneath. You can't let somebody get freaking wide open. That's two weeks in a freaking row that they did the same bullshit. I know you follow your team. Do you know who, who is the culprit for the breakdown? I heard it was Denzel I, Ward. I don't know. I, I, every week it's somebody different. But they, they have to fix it. And, and, and – that moment in the game, you simplify the shit and back people up, put people in. I, I mean, people take say the prevent, linebackers out. Put all defensive backs in. Make them show, throw the ball underneath is what Dan's yeah. saying and matriculate. They had no the timeouts. He didn't. I was, None. I was super pissed. I, I'm like, I don't want to watch this game anymore. Chubb goes in. I'm like, fine, I don't have to watch this game anymore. I stay for the extra point because personally I have a line of minus six and a half in the game. It's what, it's what happened with real betting. It's what happened on our show. Yeah, because uh, then you're you missing the extra me point. After the extra point, you're like, I Mother, screws us. I'm like, oh my God, I gotta watch this game. They're gonna give up the prevent touchdown. Yep. I'm gonna lose this game yep. by half a point. And at that point, when when the Jets got that first touchdown, I'm like, I was so pissed. Well, I had to retape the remote because I slammed the remote down. Um and then I'm like, I told Keaton, I'm like, fuck it, I hope they lose. Well, and sure then- enough, they did. <laughs> I didn't think it would happen, but sure enough, they did. You watch the replay on the onside kick. Amari Cooper's over there, and somebody told him, bat the ball out of bounds. Well, he tried batting it and missed it rather than just scoop the damn thing up. You're on the hands team for a reason, I think, is what Dan said. I mean, you you overthink, and it's analytic bullshit sometimes. I I mean, it's fucking football. Play football. Play. Do you see what happened with Jimmy Haslam, the Browns owner? Somebody threw a bottle in his direction. He did not get struck with it. It hit like, him in the leg. In the leg? It did. On the bounce? No, no, no. On the fly, it was. It wasn't a bad toss. I'm like, I saw. Well, I didn't probably see it. a truck driver pissed about his rebate. Maybe. Uh, does the Haslam family still own Flying Jays? I love. No, they stuff, sold probably. it. I think uh, Warren Buffett bought it. I saw that. I'm like, holy shit. Mark the mechanics banned for life. It's got to be him. <laughs> <laughs> it it was wasn't not. him. No, yeah, you know I who saw it was? The guy's new name. Somebody named Miller. Yeah, I think it he's is. an attorney. He is. He's a managing partner for a prominent law firm in Akron, no Cleveland. No way. Happens to be the same law firm that our good buddy JB, who used to play with the Ballbusters and with Dan on his whatever JB. soccer team. Managing. Jason. Get out of yes. here. Yes, Jason works at that law firm. Uh, he works in the Akron division. Um, the Get person who, out of town. Yes. 
His name is, I, I looked it up today. His name's off the website already. Uh, Bar Association, I don't think he's going to do anything about it, but you can lose your job. I mean, I don't know if there's a contract. He is a managing partner of the Cleveland portion of that law firm. Yeah, I mean, here's the deal. You throw a beer and hit a sideline reporter. It was a water bottle. It wasn't a beer bottle. Oh, it was? It was a water water bottle. bottle. Fine. You hit a sideline person, whatever it is, fine. You may get away with it. You hit the owner, they will find you. (laughs) And they did. So he's getting prosecuted for assault. I mean... Yeah, it's an ugly situation. So. Oh, that's funny. I hadn't heard all that. I I knew I knew I heard his name. Anyone I thought I heard his last name attorney. on the show? Oh, I know yeah. a big no, deal. I it don't. doesn't have anything to do with him, and it's a great law firm. I promise you. I, I know from working in the legal community here in Akron, and Cleveland. So. Um, oh my God. It, it, should, it has no reflection on that law firm, which is a fantastic law firm. So. Um, there's that football. I think we're onto it. Now nah, wait. Let's go back to the the meltdown. And uh, Kyler Murray got punched in the face. Oh, I saw that. The mush that face. That was bullshit. I saw the mush face. Yeah, I mean. That's somebody try, just reaching over trying to do a high five. To his face? He That's could, not he what happened. See, come on. You've seen the replay. He, the dude's reaching over just trying to. Trying to what? Get a high five. I mean, his From hand Kyler is Mur- like really? this. I mean, I haven't seen enough. I saw him. I only saw it once on Twitter. Dude, if um, you want to punch somebody, you're like this, and you're fuck, you're going to deliver a blow. I think he tried to mush face him. No. No? No. I mean, it was a Raider fan. Way. I mean, why is he trying to high-five Kyler Murray? They're in Raider Stadium. Because he's a celebrity. No, no, no. He just he's had terrible. a huge no game. Way. No you way. wouldn't high-five him if they won? No, i mush face him. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> That's stupid. That, that one's dumb. Anyway, now that we're going to continue to talk about this and not talk about football, well, it is football. You know, the... The last time a team gave up a 13-point lead with under two minutes? Yeah, it was the Browns against the Bears, like 2,230 times ago. Or close, whatever. 2,229 games uh, ago. I was one happened. off, seriously one close. Off. You know what? I, I was, was right on. I was watching that game. You just a, wanted to bring that up because it was the Bears. Now, yes, now defunct rib restaurant called Damon's Ribs. You remember that place? Mm-hmm. Not around anymore. I did not have Sunday ticket at the time. Um, me and my buddies, as long as we brought like a few, like a crew, like four or five people, we were allowed to watch the Bear game, but it didn't really matter because they were playing the Browns, the local team, right? So, but my problem with the whole game and how it unfolded, and the Bears ended up winning, and I promise you the Browns fans were salty, I didn't have my muscle with me, which was my buddy Shane, who lived up here at the time. Oh, this lived in Tampa, Shane, doesn't yeah, like soccer. doesn't like soccer. My guy, talk. my guy, I didn't have That's my muscle, muscle with me. And, oh, dude, yeah, he's a big dude. He's not going to take any shit. I mean, I'm a pretty big dude, too, but I run my mouth probably a little bit more than Shane. He, yeah, he, he, he's there. He, he's no slouch in regards to uh, running his mouth. But uh, he wasn't there to help me out, and I was in a little bit of trouble, you know, because I was running my mouth. It was the Bears get a Hail Mary. The game goes into overtime. Um, there's a deflected ball. Tim Couch threw it. Mike Brown returns it for a touchdown in the opening play of overtime. It was a complete disaster for the Browns meltdown once again. Anyway, I'm not sure why I'm telling that story. and Our intro is super long. Super long. <laughs> we'll go fast through the games. I don't know about that. We're on a Thursday night football, right? Sure. All right. And the, the well, we're going to talk about this before we talk about the football game. I don't have to stream it, which I'm super happy because it shows locally here. And that's the only way you can watch it. Wow. That's quick. Um, you might well, go through three. Three at nine. And I'm a half percent? Home. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah, streaming wise, I don't have to do it. I, I think I can watch it locally. I think they are broadcast locally. It is. But only for your local teams. Only in Cleveland and Pittsburgh. And we're we're in Akron here, like 40 minutes south of, of Cleveland. So I, we still get 40. The, 40 minutes south? You must drive slow. All right. Fair enough. Um, but I think I, How I don't long have take to stream. You get to Youngstown. I mean, hour. Get out of here. It takes an, an hour? hour? Yeah, 58 minutes it took me last time I did it. Um, in any event, uh, the streaming situation, we have kick-ass internet here. We have young boys, they game, they do that. We make sure we accommodate that situation. And Oh, wait. this Is is this the first show the, since the Thursday night game? Sure. Yeah. Um, it plus, was like watching a Godzilla movie in the second half where the people on TV are talking like that and the sound is messed up. Mine wasn't that bad, that bad, but a lot of people had that experience of Dan speaking of exactly right now. Um, 
Chargers. Chiefs it's like game. The, the, the Godzilla from like when we were kids in the seventies. You know, they're all Japanese and it's dubbed with American. Yeah. Well, my my TV never went fuzzy or anything like that. Like a lot of people's did. Um, there was a, a like a slight delay, and then all of a sudden the boys didn't match the play. And yes. I would have yeah. to go, I would have to go back to the home channel and say I want to watch this game live again to get it to match again. But it would happen like 20 minutes later, you know, 15 minutes later. It was like, but there's a lot of other people with worse experience. Me than watching the Browns game and have the volume off because the announcers blow on TV, and I'm listening to the local crew on radio. I, I'm ahead on the radio. I agree, and, and here's the thing. I mean, that, that was a great, you know, theoretically a great game. I mean, the Chargers, great team, playing the Chiefs, great team, right? Yep. This week, we have a game that is very popular locally. You mean the Browns in Pittsburgh, but I'll they're two. I'll be there live, so I don't have to deal Don't give me a lot of shit. They're two very average football teams. I think, Get out of here. Hold on. I think we're going to, what all I'm saying is I think we're going to see a monster drop off in viewership on Thursday night because of the streaming problems. Oh, and yeah. Two, like, not because of the game. I'm going to call them matchup. average teams. I know you're getting mad about it. But anyway, I mean, it's not like it's a marquee game. It's a huge rivalry locally. Okay. Certainly, but uh, all I'm saying is, you, not, don't, you not, don't think there's going to be a monster drop now you're off. You're just being hurtful. I'm not trying to be. Don't, you don't think there's going to? No, I predict they want to see Miles Garrett help the quarterback get his helmet back on. I sent a I sent a uh, tweet to Roger Goodell. I'm like, this is not going to work for Sunday Ticket. I don't care who gets it. If Amazon gets it, if Apple gets it, or whoever now, gets it, what, it what really that's sucks. not going to work. You couldn't change the channel. Right. Do you know what that doc- sucked? Now all of a sudden, I know what Doctor Squatch is. Which was the first three commercials I felt like when I was watching that game. Uh, Justin Herbert, the, the Charger quarterback, was promoting it. I'm, I'm, I pay no attention. My wife says I never listen. I don't even still know what the product is. I don't know what fucking hair gel or what it is. I don't know what the hell it was. But the first three commercials were Dr. Squatch. And I'm like, I have to watch this. Um, fortunately, I don't. My lousy collegiate team, the Illinois Fighting Illini, played, I want to say Chattanooga. <laughs> On uh, on Thursday night, um, so Did I'll be able win? to flip back and forth. No, they play Thursday night when oh, the Browns game is going. So I'll be able to flip back and forth just because I get to watch it locally. So anyway, uh, great division game, if you will. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers one and one travel to Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland has the same record one and one. Uh, Cleveland has been put as a four and a half point favorite over under in this game is very low, thirty eight and a half. Um, Pittsburgh, you know the offense. Appears to be very limited right now under Mitch Trubisky. He's a local kid, by the way. Yeah. Let me ask you this. What am I cooking for a tailgate party? Oh, go for it. Cleveland Italian beef. That's not a thing. I thought it was a thing. We talked about... No, you just made it up. You made it up. Fuck. Hell yeah, I made it up. Okay, what's the difference between... I put onion in there. Okay. (laughs) Onion. Onion. And I'm making bacon ends as an appetizer. Well, you're taking this... Up there? Yeah, I'm going to cook it. Wait, who's all going? Who's all going pans. with? <laughs> this show, this show 100% is going to run long. <laughs> well, I'm going. Tyler's going. Delaney's going. Son and daughter. Uh, one of Delaney's roommates is going. And I told her, because her, her dad has season tickets, one of her roommates from college is going. It's from uh, Bay Village, a suburb of Cleveland. So I said, bring him over. Uh... Dave. Business partner. Yep. Dave is Dan's business partner. Some of Dave's friends and his kids are coming. And then Mark the Mechanic. Mark the Mechanic. Well, they're, they go to the Flatiron Cafe and then usually take the shuttle to the stadium. Where's that? Like the Flats or something? Like yeah. Uh, so are you going to be in the Muni lot? Where are you going to be? Do you know? We're going to be close. No, we're not in the Muni lot. Screw that. We're going to be by uh, the Renaissance Hotel right off of Public Square. Right by the casino. Should be an awesome time. What time are you planning on going up? I am picking up my son. I told him we're leaving your University lot of Akron student? at 4 o'clock. Leave at 4, get there around probably 5 with traffic, even though no. Dan thinks he can make it 30 minutes. Bullshit, dude. Not with that traffic going up there. No way. Nobody You're works fast five Cleveland. Po- <laughs> Ain't no way. 5 o'clock, then I'm picking him up at 3.30. Dan always finds a way to put a little political narrative in his show, which I kind of like. We don't have enough workers. Are we on to this game? Yeah, let's go. All right. The Steel, or, sorry, the, the Browns are four and a half point favorites over under 38 and a half. What I was getting to right before we started talking about something else, and, and that has a tendency to happen a lot on the show. Um, Mitch Trubisky is a starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they've been very limited on offense. Have they scored an offensive touchdown? 
I don't know that. No. Um, really? The answer is no? Um, local kid from Cleveland, if you will. Yeah, he's from Menor. Yes. Do you think Tama, if they struggle, would – I mean, he's going to have a ton of family there, ton of friends, family there. Any chance Tomlin, being the stand-up guy he is, pulls – Trubisky, if the offense is struggling and puts in the rookie, Kenny Pickett. No, it's a division game. You got to win the division games to get in the, into the playoffs. So no, I don't. Tom, Tom, I wish Tom was our coach. So do I. I mean, I, I'd love to see. Him. I'd love to see Tomlin if he was the Browns coach in his post-game press conference after we lost oh, to God. the Jets. Oh my God! That'd be yeah, we suck. Out of his ears. And and Miles Garrett's comment about. Oh, the booing. Okay, you're, you're that's soft because no. Tomlin would have said, we deserve to be booed. 100%. I and mean, it, I, it goes it, both it, ways. I mean, yeah. the fans are out there in force. They're going crazy for your winning. They're allowed to fucking Screw boo. They're that. allowed to be unhappy. I mean, they, you know, no. they're not on the team, but, you know, the heart is on their sleeve as well. Tomlin doesn't give a crap. He, it's, it's a division game, and he needs to win to make it to the show. So I guess what you're saying is, uh, if, if I mean, there's, if he there's sucks, 60 some guys on that team on that roster. I mean, if he thinks Trubisky's not playing well and thinks a change will spark that team, he's gonna do it, it right? I, I, yeah. I mean, he can't be accountable to one person. You got to be accountable to the team. I think Tomlin knows that. But anyway. Um, Cleveland, I mean, obviously we talked about their unbelievable collapse against the Jets last week where they lost. Um, Pittsburgh, they lost against New England as well. But anyway, um, Cleveland's formula doesn't change. It's it's defense and run yeah. the ball while, while it shouldn't change. Brissett is, you know, Brissett the played lights out. That's why I'm really pissed. The offense Very played efficient. really good. I would say efficient. Amari Cooper had a great game. Chubb had a great game. Hunt had a great game. So we wasted that performance. That should have been a win what, There's only 17 for, of these games, man. Yeah, yeah, I know. You can't, you it, can't piss away a game like that. It's, it's you funny. Can't. It, you said that because when we talk about Carolina, and and it, when Baker would lose games early, he was like, oh, "It's a long season. It's a long season." There's only it's 17 not a long of them. season. No, and everyone. Counts Miles gives a lot. that same message. We got a lot of games. We'll fix it. No, you didn't do that shit last year. You know, now Baker's saying the same shit at Carolina. No, it doesn't it's apply. not. You can't lose these games that you're supposed to win. That's why I think the National Football League is so sexy because every game counts. Every yeah, game counts. Because you're not playing a 162 game baseball season. You're not playing an 82 game. Right. You know because what? In the middle of December, season. we're gonna see a you're graphic that games. says in the hunt for the playoffs, or and we're gonna be there. The Browns are gonna be on there in the hunt, and they're gonna be going. If we'd have beat the Jets, right. when we hadn't I mean, beat, we wouldn't be in the hunt. Yeah, week six, 17, when, you know, they need to win to get in and they need help or whatever, they're like, oh, my God, that Jets game, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. I, mean, yeah it's gonna, it, I mean, it's because, real. I mean, and I said this earlier, which is weird, the Jets play the AFC North or their first four games. Every team in the AFC North are their first four games. That's a crazy quirk. They played Baltimore first. Um, ben us. Now they're playing Cincinnati this week and then Steelers. Wow. Yeah, that's a weird quirk. Um, we got to pick the line. We're, we're way over already. I'm taking the Browns. Browns are minus four and a half in this game. I'm not. I'm going to take the Steelers, and I'll tell you why right now. Uh, both these teams have played two games, obviously. Um, each of them are one and one. They've either won or lost by three points or less. I think it's going to happen again. I think it's a tight football game. I mean, the Browns' formula is defense and running the football. Miles Garrett is playing, although he didn't practice, I want to say, yesterday or today, whatever the situation is. He's playing. Clowney's out. Yeah, that but, sucks, Clowney. I mean, yeah. they have that two-headed run game, and we'll see if they can shove it down the Steelers' throat with Hunt and Chubb. I just love watching Hunt run. Yeah, he wants to kill you. Dude runs like his hair's on fire. Yeah. Anyway, we, we've talked enough about this game. Dinner odds again Thursday night football. Um, I, the line's too big for me with, with both these teams being, in my mind, significantly limited on offense. I like the Steelers getting to four and a half. I don't know who wins the game. Uh, with that being said, I think it goes under the number. Uh, 1 p.m. slate starts with another division game. The New Orleans Saints traveling to Carolina. Uh, New Orleans is 1-1. One one. Carolina is 0-2 on the season. New Orleans is a three-point favorite in this game. Over-under is 40.5. Uh, New Orleans comes off their loss against Tampa Bay, somewhat marred by that altercation fight between Mike Evans and Lattimore. They do not, do not like each other at all. Yeah. They've had you know, issues is before. That's fine. I mean, 
Jameis is supposedly playing with like multiple fractures in his back. I yeah, mean, I don't know. What that's kind of scary. They're a mess on offense. I mean, Kamara didn't play last week. I don't know if he's going to play this week. I mean, that defense is supposed to be great. Um, they play plenty fine. I mean, I think Jameis threw three interceptions last week in the third quarter against him. Grab legs is them. back. Yeah. Uh, Carolina, they lost to the New York Giants last week. Um, that's nine straight losses for the Carolina Panthers going back to last year. Uh, line once again to recap. Saints three-point favorites, over-unders 40 and a half. Not expecting a lot of points here. Um, I mean, Cleveland's not missing Baker Mayfield. The offense... I've used the word limited a lot already, I feel like. What do you, what do you think about this game, Dan? I think I'm I, I'm going to take Carolina on this. I'm New Orleans, I think, is kind of a mess. Um, even if Kamara plays, I think that's an even match with McCaffrey. I'm going with Carolina. I'm gonna Divisional go, game. It is. I'm going to go the other way. I think New Orleans is a considerably <laughs> better team. Um I don't know. I mean, Dan, you could be right. I mean, this isn't one of the games I'll personally play. I mean, no. it, could, it could go I'd either way. I'd stay hell away from it, this one. Yeah, I agree with Dan completely on that. I just think New Orleans is a, a much more talented team, at least on the defensive side of the ball. They're not showing it, though. They're not. You're right. I mean, some, some – Who the hell is the coach? Switch has to flip there somewhere. Dennis Allen, you know, who's long-time He's a defensive court. Guy. Yeah, yeah, 100% so. Uh, next game on the board, the Houston – Texans travel to Soldier Field to play my Chicago football Bears. Houston 0-1-1 on the season. They had to tie the first week. They come up a loss against Denver. The Bears lost on Sunday Night Football to Green Bay. Came back to reality a little bit. They are 1-1 and on the season. The Bears are two and a half point, or no, nope, I'm sorry. The Bears are three point favorites in this game. Field goal favorites in this game. Uh, Houston, like I said, they lost out in Denver. Um, defensive struggle game. Uh, I don't love Smith as a defensive guy. Yeah, and, and he came to the most prominence when he coached the Bears, um, and they made it to the Super Bowl under him, and, and his defensive kind of bend-don't-break strategy, which I've never really cared for. Um, but Houston, I mean, the defense was good last week. The offense seems to struggle with Davis Mills. They lack playmakers. Um, the Bears, yes. I mean – you like offense, this really isn't your game. The Bears have no. struggled on offense as well. I think Fields, I'm not going to be an apologist for him. He needs to be more decisive. Dan was a surprise visitor last week over here for the the game against the Bears. Oh, I, I on Sunday say, night, what yeah. What time did you make it? Halftime, maybe before that? No. I, when they scored, Justin Fields, they scored. They were up. I was like, oh, I'm going to Kent. So it, it was probably around 9 o'clock I showed up. Probably midway through the, uh, the My wife the was watching quarter. House of Dragons. I'm like, I can't watch this shit anymore. I've seen it's that advertised. It, I don't watch that. It's um, weird. I mean, yeah, the Bears had a 7-3 lead, and then it kind of it went downhill from there. I'm not sh- I feel like they got the short end of the stick in regards to some calls. There was an obvious false start that hurt the Bears. There was the play at the goal line where we both thought Fields got in. Um, oh, Yeah. And, and then he called. I'm pretty sure I saw the referee do a Lambo leap after the game. Fuck yeah. them. Fuck the Packers. Um, Bears, minus three in this game, Dan. They're going to win this game by a field goal? Yep. I'm going with the Bears. Me too. I refuse to go the other way. I think the Bears are a better football team. I, I like their defense. Fields has to be more decisive. I mean, Montgomery ran hard in that game, and he had a lot of yards against the Packers. Uh, I'm still, I'm sure that's still going to be the formula with the Bears, but I think they need to open it up a little bit more on that field. I mean, their number one wide receiver, Mooney, I think has one catch on the year. Cole Komet, who's probably their second best receiving weapon, has zero catches on the year. Listen, you know this? The Bears have thrown the ball through two games so far. You know, guess how many times they've thrown the ball? Ten. Twenty, dude, really? Twenty-eight times. Which well, is, okay. most teams but, throw the, I mean, Joe Flacco threw the ball how many times first week? The first game was a freaking monsoon. I understand. Well, Joe Flacco threw it 59 times the first freaking game. Through two but, games. I mean, he, the Bears threw the ball 11 times the first game, 17 times against Green Bay. How many times did San Francisco throw it in that game? That's not dumb. A lot, but Why still. don't you know where you're bringing that up? I mean, that was, the conditions did not, no. And Screw Fields that. had a few people open. That's dumb. Anyway, we're done talking about this game. Dan and I are both on the Bears. Minus three. We'll see how that one shakes. Uh, next game on the board, Kansas City. They traveled to Indianapolis. Kansas City's 2-0. and Indianapolis 0-1-1. Uh, Kansas City's six and a half point favorite in this game. Overrunners 49 and a half. Kansas City comes off their Thursday night win against the Los Angeles Chargers. 
where I don't think they deserve to win. No. The pick six at the goal line that Herbert threw. Yeah. When the, the tight end was asking out of the game, like, I'm exhausted, I can't play. And put minimal, Why didn't they call a timeout? I don't they had, know. They, they, put minimal effort in the route. The, the cornerback jumps it and goes. Wasn't he a walk-on? Walk-on, cornerback, on seventh yeah, round, I mean, late, what the, whatever it is. His, his, you know, moment of fame for sure. Um, and goes, like, goal line to goal line, if you will. And it changed the game completely. But the Chargers really kind of dominated that game. They're a good football team. But – they're not the team on the board. Kansas City Chiefs, they're still a proven commodity in regards to their offense. Indianapolis, like, wildly struggling. Where's uh, their defense? Where is their defense? And where's their offensive line? Because uh, Matt Ryan's getting hit. I mean, that's fine if, if you bring in a statue of a quarterback, which Matt Ryan is. I mean, Dan and I may both statue be... Statue and a turnover machine. I don't know who gets the... the gold, silver, or bronze if Dan, I, and Matt Ryan are running in a 40-yard dash. But I think it's competitive. That's I how get the fucking just because of my knees. <laughs> I mean, the offensive line has to be great if Matt Ryan's your quarterback, right? Because the defense knows yeah, exactly what he's going to be. I, I, and yeah. their offensive line has not been great. I mean, we thought this was going to be a great football team. They probably had the premier back in the National Football League in Jonathan Taylor. It's not happening. I mean, this team Dude, they got this shut out. in trouble. Shut yeah, shut out. out in Jacksonville where they've traditionally struggled. Kansas City's minus six and a half. Is he going to rebound? I mean... This desperation thing, I think, is real. I mean, I know they have that tie, and they're not 0-2. They're 0-1-1. I, I'm going with Indy because I'm sick of picking Kansas City because they never cover. Kansas City's going to win this game, but it ain't going to be by six and a half. I'm taking Indy. I'm going to go the other way. I mean, show me. Show me. Show I, me, I'm Indy. Not, I'm not, I'll be happy to lose it. I got screwed by Kansas City last week. And I thought the Chargers were a better team, and I thought they were, and they should have won the football game. Um, that's a lot. Um, Kansas City, I mean, Indy, you got to show You want me. another one? Yeah. You're it. I'll yeah, I'll take another one in a minute. Um, yeah, I'm just bring it out here. I'll be good. I'm no, bring it out. I'm my ass up twice. This is a long show, for sure. The marquee game on the board, I think I mentioned it earlier, is the Buffalo Bills traveling, taking their talented football team down to South Beach to play the Miami Dolphins. Dan is in for his third 9.5% alcohol beer. 918.27. I think that makes it 28.5% of beer. I don't know. I think that's right. Math is hard, man. Anyway, Buffalo, obviously 2 0. They're minus 5 in this game going down to Miami. Uh, this is the only game on the board where both teams are 2 0. Miami's 2 0 as well. Uh, over under on this game is 52. Buffalo, they come off their win against Tennessee. Uh, impressive win where they only played their starters three quarters because they were that impressive. Yeah, Case Keenum. Yeah, I was like, what? I, I mean, Buffalo looks really good. I mean, right now. We got to talk about that hit. That kid, oh. friendly fire. Holy shit. I don't know if you saw that He's live okay, on which TV. Is a great thing. He's okay. But my goodness, that kid got his head snapped back by uh, that Edmonds. Big ass linebacker. I think, I think that's correct. I only saw a piece Holy of it. Holy hell! I was trying I, to watch I, both games. I'm really happy that kid's okay, because and he is. I mean, all was, feeling, that everything's was, all right. And I don't. It, that it, was an ugly scene. That's the ugly part of football. And the and, helmet technology and the the shoulder. I mean, his head snapped. I I it. Shit! I thought it was gonna come off. It was bad. I mean, I thought he was going to be hurt really bad, but to find, find out, you know. Like, not play football again yes, hurt bad. Uh, and, uh, and then I watched a ton of football. Yeah, yeah like, mean, that, it that was a scary was, scene. It was. It was a scary that scene. That ranks up there with Joe Theismann's broken leg. I mean, when I saw that hit. I, I did not want to see it again. I, I, I don't like violence. I don't watch UFC. Someone. It was just, you know, uh, well. Every once in a while. Bang, a, bang. There's a fight at the local high school. Ethan or whoever will come home with a video, like, watch it. I'm like, I'm not going to watch it. I hate violence. I don't know. I don't like violence at all. I don't know why I'm talking about that. I'm going to recap the line. Buffalo's minus five. Down in Miami. Over under is 52. Both the teams are 2-0. and oh, The marquee game of the week for sure. Dude, uh, that, that Miami coach, McDaniels. Yes. I love him. Squirrely little he, fellow. I love he, him. Yeah. Squirrely little fellow with those 70s sunglasses on. Looks like he totally fits in Miami. Maybe. I mean, Just, he's fitting right now because shit's working. Um, I love Mike McDaniel. I said it was my favorite hire 
as far as the offseason coaches, just because I have this infatuation with Kyle Shanahan, and I think everybody under him learns from him, and I think he's the best offensive mind by far in the National Football League, and it's starting to show itself, I think, already down in South Beach with the Miami Dolphins. My in-laws are super excited. I'm happy for them. Um, we, we mentioned um, the win against Tennessee. Here's the thing. Tennessee I mean, looked awful. They did, and they're on the board next. But Miami or Buffalo's coming off a short week, right? They played on Monday night. Short week. They got to yeah. go down to South Beach. Or they don't play good in Florida. It's hot as fuck. Down Didn't they there. lose to Jacksonville down there? They may have. I mean, maybe those are the factors. But here's the deal with the Dolphins. I mean, that. I mean, what a performance by that offense in the fourth quarter. I mean, they crazy. gave up the opening kickoff touchdown to Baltimore. They were behind the eight ball the whole game. And they were down by 21 points going into the fourth quarter, and they showed incredible resiliency. Incredible resiliency. I mean, the plays to Waddle and Hill and the passing game, and I think Tua threw for six touchdowns. Is this a, like a, a mental like game changer for Tua, and he's going to become a great quarterback, do you think? I mean, that's a lot. I, I think stretch, he's going to be good. I, I, I mean, he makes the reads, and it's easy. When dudes are wide freaking open, it's easy to throw them the ball. I mean, come on. That one freaking Tyreek Hill. Hey, what do you think of Baltimore's defense? What do you think of Baltimore's defense? I mean. Hey, they're yeah. the Radfords. They suck. That's some scheming, too. I mean, those guys were running wide open in the fourth quarter. I got a chance to watch no, that. No, it's end. stupid. Um, I mean, you're not going to cover Tyreek Hill? Yeah. Well, you got Waddle. I mean, Waddle's Why? Yeah. almost the equal I weapon. I mean, they have, they have great weapons. They do. And Gusecki who does not do the gritty very well, but did his best effort. I like that. He got one of those touchdowns. Um, I mean, the Dolphins are the early storyline of the National Football League. They're going to continue this. They're going to beat the Buffalo Bills. They're going to be under this number. What do you think? No, I'm going with Buffalo. Me too. And I'm sorry to the in-laws. Yeah. Here's the I deal. I apologize too, Tom. Here's the deal. That's the only one I'm apologizing to. They played yeah. New England the first week. They probably put together a, a good yeah, quarter sucks. and a half of football, maybe the two. Suck. They have a great defense. I tell you what, week two against Baltimore, Lucked they out. played one good quarter of football, and it was enough to win the football game, and good for them because every win counts. But if you ask me, the Buffalo Bills have put together eight quarters of good football. Well, seven because they played. They only had to play their backups in the fourth quarter yeah. against Tennessee. I, I I love Miami as a wild card team. I think Buffalo is the class of the National Football League unless there's injuries that happen. Uh, I'm on Buffalo minus five. Dan and I are both together on that one. Uh, next game on the board, another division game, Detroit and Minnesota. Uh, Detroit, uh, well, Minnesota's six and a half point favorite over under this game is 52 and a half. Detroit comes off their win against Washington and like another shootout game. They were up big at half, like 22 to nothing. I want to say the game ends up like 38, 35. They score a ton of points. Hey, the young team doesn't know how to win. They don't. Like struggle to win and, yeah. and to close or finish or however you want to say it. It yeah. doesn't really matter. Um, they scored more than 35 points in both their games. Their offense needs to be a juggernaut. They have an emerging star. And I, I mean, maybe that's even like sure, or like making like not enough to. Iran, St. Brown. <laughs> what is it? Aranma St. Brown, maybe? I think I want to say his name is. I don't know how to say his first name. It's the dude from Notre Dame. That's that Equ to... Equiminus. But that's his brother. Yes, his little brother. Yes. Yes. Yeah, his little brother. And I, I, yeah, I and struggle with the Then I too. take issue with his parents for making such yeah. difficult first names to pronounce. I think it's Aranma. St. Brown? Right. And I the mean, other one's Equinemius I or something? Yes. I hesitate yeah. to say he's an emerging star. He's a fucking star, man. He's here. He's here. Um, and I think that Detroit offense is going to be great. DeAndre Swift is coming into his own as a running back. Um, the kid they drafted uh, really high in, you know, four, five, six overall, Jamison Williams from Alabama, who came off hurt. He's that good that we'll still take him this high. Hasn't played yet. Hopefully he comes back midseason in regards to that. They have a pretty potent offense. Minnesota, they come off, well, first of all, week one, a great a great performance at home against the Packers, and then a loss on Monday night that looked terrible. in Philadelphia, where Philadelphia dominated the football game. I mean, Kirk Cousins has traditionally performed very poorly on Monday night. He did it again. Yeah, he, I did see that. Yeah, like he has a horrible... Right I mean, after Orlovsky farted. 
That was on the other telecast on Monday night. It did happen. I don't know if we want to talk about that or not because the show's running so long. But a commentator shit his pants, just like Mudbutt for the Ratbirds. He did. It was pregame. I, I, I think it is, Dan. Uh, I feel bad for him. It was a cough, and then it came out the back end. He crop dusted the booth, I guess. I don't know. Um, Minnesota minus six in this game and against Detroit. Triple sizzling in his shorts. Minnesota's a very good football team, regardless of that result and that performance by Cousin, Cousins in Philadelphia. It's a tough place to play. What's Detroit the line hang on his, this one? Six? Minnesota minus six, Detroit 52 and a half. Minnesota minus six. I got to go with Detroit on this. I think it's going to be closer. Me too. Me too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Detroit in this game. Um, I think so my, they're going to win, but I don't think it's going to be by six. There's a lot of points expected. I'm worried about the backdoor cover from the Lions, who are studs at doing it. They did it to me the first week against Philadelphia. I mean, maybe maybe Minnesota is a, a, is a 10, 13-point lead, you know, going late, and they give up this backdoor touchdown yeah. on the last drive, and it gets under the number. I like Detroit to get on this number. I don't like, necessarily like them to win the game. I love Detroit under the number in this game, though. Next game on the board, kind of a fun game. Uh, Baltimore at New England. Uh, Baltimore's 1-1. New England has the same record of 1-1. Uh, Baltimore, three-point favorite. Field goal favorite in Foxborough. Over-under this game is 43.5. Baltimore, we just talked about them coming off their collapse against Miami in the fourth quarter. I mean, Lamar Jackson is an elite athlete. Elite yeah. athlete. And New Rashawn England. Bateman getting involved in the thing. I mean, it was always like Mark Andrews, but this Rashawn Bateman kid out of Minnesota, who we both liked yeah. a couple years ago coming out of Minnesota, has kind of stepped up. Um, New England hasn't showed me anything. They usually blow in the month of September. I'm going with the Ratbirds in this one. Easy. New England, uh, they come off their win against Pittsburgh, but they're still limited on they're offense. Still, like, yeah, like no. Super limited on they're, offense. They don't have playmakers. No. Um, there was a mistake on special teams by the Steelers that gave uh, New England a short field last week. It gave them the touchdown lead, which was insurmountable based upon the limited offense of New England and Pittsburgh. Um, Baltimore, I mean, I have questions about their defense, um, not about their offense, really, because simply because of the playmaking ability of Lamar Jackson, I like them a lot in this game as well at minus three because just the sheer fact that Lamar Jackson – He's yeah. going to touch the ball every time on offense. Yep. And there's a chance that he goes the entire way. Every time. It's scary. Uh, we're both on Baltimore minus three. The next game on the board. Oh Cincinnati and the Jets. Cincinnati's 0-2. The Jets are 1-1. One one. Isn't that a song? Cincinnati and the Jets. Benny and oh, the Jets. Benny. Very close. I love it. I love it. <laughs> really? The other yeah. one queued up from the gate? That's good. No, I'm just That's good on the fly. Oh, my God. I'm going to be... Drinky. Uh, Cincinnati, this game, this, this show's running this so This game long. sucks. Cincinnati blows. Both these teams blow. There's, is Flack, well, yeah, Flacco's still playing. He is. They I, can't run the ball. Cincinnati can't do shit on offense. Cincinnati's minus five in this game. Uh, the over-under is 45. Cincinnati recap is 0-2. Like, Super Bowl hangover, 0-2. That's a big hangover. I, Collins didn't practice today, but that might be a blessing in disguise because he hasn't helped the offensive line at all. I'm almost tired of talking about their offensive line. They gave, yeah. up, they gave up seven sacks the first week, six sacks the second week. I mean, this is a, a problem for sure. I mean, they have playmakers on offense. Uh, are they going to fix this? The Jets come off that very improbable win in Cleveland, obviously, not to – Put a dagger in your heart anymore. That win is so insane. No, I got to go with Cincinnati on this. Breakout game for Garrett Wilson. I mean, Flacco's playing again. I I mean, I don't know. But when you don't touch Flacco, who's a statue back there, Miles Garrett, I don't know where you were. Did you have a half a sack? Clowney. Clowney, I'm pissed Clowney's not playing this week because Clowney, I I love Clowney. Clowney's. Unpopular pick. J-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Unpopular. I, I mean, oh, most you're not of the, picking him? No, not, I'm most not of the betting him. public, I think it's going to go Cincinnati minus five. Until I see that offensive line perform better, no. You're taking and here, Jets? I'm taking Jets because of this. Because of this. They won a game last week that they had no They're right gonna to win. They're going to be fired up. They're going to be fucking wild. They're going to I mean, Fireman Fred or whatever the hell that guy's name is. I think, uh, it's, yeah. I think it's Ed, not Fred. <laughs> anyway... 
I mean, that place is going to be bonkers. I mean, they won a football game. They're one and one. You know, they're in the mix already. You know, like it's week three and we're in the mix. That usually doesn't happen. Usually they start at zero and two. I mean, that place is going to be nuts. Um, but I don't know. I think they're going to play I, off I a ton I of momentum. I expect Cincinnati to blow coverages. The problem is on their offense. I, I, the I'm, the I'm, problem is the offensive line. I'm staking Cincinnati. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. this is. This is a scary, dangerous pick. I'm, I'm on the Jets, the Jets getting the five. Dan and I have a I'm ton of games different. Cincinnati. Dan and I have a ton of games different. Um, next game on the board, the Las Vegas Raiders. Speaking of struggling team, travel to Tennessee. Speaking of struggling teams. Two Ohio head coaches going face-to-face. Josh McDaniels, who comes from our area, Canton McKinley High School. Mike Rabel. Walsh Jesuit. Walsh Jesuit in... Akron Stowe. Falls, Cogger Falls, Stowe. Yes, Stowe, sir. Ohio. Uh, both within 15 minutes of uh, yeah. driving distance from where Dan and I sit right now. Um, both these teams struggling mightily. 0 oh, 2. Um, Vegas is. Shit, in, Vegas should have won last week. You know, kidding. Vegas installs a two and a half point favorite. Um, over under in this game is 46. Las Vegas comes off of an absolute. Debacle last week when they were up twenty to nothing, late in the game against the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals find a way to push the game into overtime and win the game on a turnover in overtime, where there was almost a huge blunder by the defensive back or safety. Byron Murphy barely crossed the goal line. Did you see? Oh the, yeah. Did you see the late touchdown I, from Arizona against Arizona? Yeah, that I think you told me. Yeah, about when he. Th- Toss the ball or something, or yeah, yeah. Oh, that was yeah. The, that was the touchdown in overtime. But the touchdown that that within the last minute that shoved. Well, they needed the two point conversion as well. But to shove the game into overtime, the Raiders were rushing three, and Kyler Murray's there, like running around. The play must have lasted. I swear to God, it felt like twenty seconds. I mean, he. And I saw something on Twitter. I'm a big Twitter fan, and I send Dan like a lot of like dog Twitter things. But I should have sent it this. And they showed Kyler Murray running around. And he's like running around, running around. He's like stops for a while, starts running around. Because they're only rushing three. And they can't catch him. And then there's this coordinated picture of this. Somebody in the stands should have thrown a bottle at him. There's a coordinated picture on or Twitter. slapped him in the face. Of this harder. toddler in a diaper. Who's like probably three years old or something. I don't know how old he is. But he steals his parents' his mom's like cell phone. He's like running around in circles. Running all over nice. the place. He's like, he's like, Kyler Murray is like. A toddler who stole their parents' cell phone and the, the parents yeah, trying to find out. Okay, see, anyway. if the toddler took my beer, he'd have been down. Yeah, well, well. Get I out mean, of the phone. It was a Not wild, it was a wild scene. It was a huge letdown for Vegas. I think they're a good team. I, I'm not so certain of Tennessee. Once again, to recap the line, Las Vegas minus two and a half over under 46. Um, we talked about Las Vegas win. Um, or Las Vegas lost against Arizona and they're let down. I mean, Tennessee got absolutely destroyed by Buffalo. Where's where's Derrick Henry? I mean I, I was wondering the same thing. I don't know if it's where's Derrick Henry or where's the offensive line, maybe, you know. I mean that those two parts have to fit together to make it work. Yeah. Um, so they're really struggling. We we love we love Mike Vrabel, yes. for sure. Um I think I I made Dan Tickley a lot. I think the Vegas Raiders are a much better team. I, I thought that the Titans were going to take a step back to the Colts. Maybe not the Colts. Maybe it's the Jags. I don't fucking know who that is in that division, the, the AFC South. But I think the Vegas Raiders are a more talented team. I'm going to lay the dangerous two and a half points for them to win the game by a field goal on the road in Nash, Vegas. I'm taking Vrabel in Tennessee. Las Vegas in Nash Vegas. Dan's on Nash yep. Vegas. I'm on Las Vegas. Yep. All right. Wow. Um, I'm going to recap or rewatch this show for sure in regards to the picks. Yeah. Next game you're going to have to send me what I picked because I don't think you're. Because I never remember. Cause I'm, I'm happy bad. to do it. I'm happy These to do it. These nine and a half percent beers. I don't remember who I picked. No problem. I, I got that for you. Uh, next game on the bar, Philadelphia, who looks like the class of the NFC, if you ask me. We'll get into that in a minute. They're six and a half point favorites traveling in division to the Washington football team, which right. is known as the Commanders. Uh, Washington's one and one on the, the year. The over under is 50 in this game. We're going to have to spend a lot of time on this. Philadelphia, ass kicking Monday night in they Minnesota. Look really freaking good. Dude. On both sides of the ball. Really good. Jalen Hurts, the third round pick, looks like he should have been 
you know, drafted in the top ten picks yeah. of the first round. I'm going on Philly on this one. He's right a physical now. running back. I mean, they have a they have a tremendous running game. Defense is playing good. They, they are. Got, they have playmakers. Another freaking local coach. Washington. Let's not Washington Wentz. I mean, Wentz throwing lots of touchdowns, throwing a few interceptions. You know, the defense has to be better for Washington. Um, Get rid of Jack Del Rio. They need Chase Young back. He's well, on. A, I think he's on. They need him back, and they need IR. to get rid of Jack Del Rio. Washington. You're on Washington. I think they come back to Earth. I think Philly comes back to Earth, a little yeah. bit, because that's what happens in the National Football League. Teams like skyrocket, and then they come back to Earth. I mean, this is another dangerous pick. I'm not going to personally play it. It's funny because I looked at the board before we started doing the show. I'm like, that's a. That might be my elephant pick. I went the other way. Like maybe, maybe it's the Booty Ranger. Fuck you, John. Mark's friend. Yeah. Uh, anyway, fucking us up. On the road, it, dude. Winning on the road in the National Football League by a touchdown or more is a difficult thing to do. I don't care who you are. Next game on the board, and we're going to talk about it here. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, one on one. Los Angeles Chargers, very good football team, one on one as well. Chargers seven-point favorite in this game. Over-under is 48. The Jacksonville Jaguars come off the shutout win against Indianapolis and are in sole possession, sole possession at first place What a shitty in the division. AFC South. What a shitty division. Shitty division right now. I like Doug Peterson. He's obviously turned things around there. Um, Trevor Lawrence obviously. playing decent football. I mean, well, it wasn't that hard coming – you know, coming out of the shadows of Urban Meyer, who actually ran that organization into the ground. Um, Jacksonville, I mean, they, they like they said, they come up that shutout win. This is, by the way, this is the start of the 4 p.m. game uh, with this game's out in, in L.A. Um, Chargers, minus seven in this game. They came off a game on Thursday night. Long week for them. Uh, they played Thursday, don't play again until Sunday. Uh, a game they should have won, barring that pick six. We, we mentioned it briefly earlier. They're a good football team, a good offensive football team, a good defensive football team. They're a really good football team. I like what's happening in Jacksonville. There's no way the hell that I'm not picking the Chargers in this game. I like yeah, them no, by a big I, number. I'm, I'm, you're, I'm totally with you. I'm taking the Chargers. Even, even with sore ribs for Herbert. Yeah, a good point. I mean, uh, Dan brought that up. I mean, that touchdown pass he threw late when he could barely, like, walk or run. I mean, yeah, well, yeah. Ribs well, hurt. hey, well, but – they say twice. It was what some torn cartilage mm-hmm. when I played soccer as the goalie, and I, you know, would dive and shit. I Come always on, said I it mean, was stretched fat. How many decades ago was that? <laughs> stretched fat. He stretched him fat. I mean, that's all I did. You better be freaking playing. Dan, it's like I pulled freaking, my love handle. Yeah, I pulled my love handle. <laughs> yeah, I stretched him fat. Come on. <laughs> I know uh, I stretch him fat. I'm, I'm, I can admit it. The hell, <laughs> got a it love hurts. handle strain. <laughs> Can't breathe. We're both on the charge, right? Drink freaking beer. Oh, we're both yeah, on the right? Chargers. That I, freaking hit. I like what's happening down in Jacks. I do. I like what's happening down in Jacks. I think the Chargers are a great football team. I'm gonna lay the wood at minus seven. Uh, next game on the board. Oh, kind of. A, I think it's a really great. fun game to me. Uh, Los Angeles Rams go out to Arizona play the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Rams uh, are. I was on the next one. Yeah, you're right. Three and a half point favorites out in Arizona. Both these teams are one and one. The over under in this game is 50 and a half. The Rams come off a win against Atlanta where they almost blew the game. I mean, this was almost another one of the yeah. collapses. Could have made the list. They were up 28 to three, right? Atlanta had a chance to exercise hey, the demons of the Super Bowl. Is that Helmets Fans are still playing? He's in, yes. Uh, Aaron he didn't get suspended. Be in. What? This is week three. So, we missed Miles Garrett for six games, and he's still in. Speaking of Eric Donald, that defense has to play better. I mean, yeah, well, that was, I mean, they were up 28-3. to three. That was a significant letdown against Arizona. Maybe Aaron Donald's not being a thug like he normally is cheating. Arizona was at the goal line. Or Arizona. Uh, Atlanta was at the goal line late in that game. And they had a chance to, like, not only win that game, or not only, like, tie the game, win the game. They did. Um, which is... Concerning for sure in regards to the defense for the Rams. Arizona, they come off that improbable comeback when, like I said, they were down 20 to nothing against Vegas in Vegas. 
They found a way to win. Kyler Murray's a playmaker. Um, Rams minus three and a half. Are they that much better of a team than, than Arizona? I don't know. I, I'm not Matt Stafford. I'm not sold on him. I, I, I told you I didn't like what he did when the girl fell off the stage. Now his elbow hurts. I don't know. I don't like Kingsbury. I like McVay. I don't like, yeah. Yeah, um, I gotta go with the Rams. Me too. I think the Rams are a considerably better team. I think it, Arizona probably should be zero and two, barring the collapse from they the Vegas should. Raiders. Um, the Rams are gonna be there in the conversation when Week Seventeen comes around. They're gonna be I like there, them to win this not, game. Yeah, they're not gonna go for that far. Next game on the board on the four o'clock slate: the Atlanta Falcons. Oh Teddy God. Grant, their hometown right now. Um, they're 0-2 on the season, unfortunately. Traveling to Seattle is 1-1. Uh, Seattle's a 2.5-point favorite in this game. The over-under is a low 42. Um, Atlanta, we just mentioned them, actually. They came off of that almost comeback win. They need to get Kyle Pitts involved. I mean, he's what they call a unicorn, if you will. Um, he has, like, nothing so far in regards to catches. I mean, he has a couple, but not a lot. Probably. Dan's throwing trash around here like crazy. Obviously, the show. Oh, my God. We're ready over. This must be an hour and 20-minute show. I'm going to pick up the pace. Um, Seattle, they come off their loss in San Francisco. Um, disappointing kind of after their opener. I mean, their their opener, they played so great against Denver at home with their 12th man. Well, they did not look good out in San Francisco. Um, Seattle is a two-and-a-half-point favorite over Atlanta in this game. Are they going to bounce back win this game? Seattle at home, yes. Me too. I like the crowd. I think they're going to stay in it. Um, I think this is going to be a very competitive game. I also like Seattle minus two and a half in this game. One of the games that was supposed to be a marquee game on the board for the four o'clock slate. And what a freaking mess. I mean, this game is played in Tampa Bay. That's an East Coast team. It's at four o'clock. So they, you know, the, the network say it's a marquee game, but I don't think it's that exciting. Um, it is either. the Green Bay Packers playing the other Bay, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Both uh, offenses below. With good right. quarterbacks. Green Bay, 1-1. One one. Tampa, 2-0. Uh, Tampa's 2.5-point favorite, just shy of a field goal favorite against Green Bay. The over-under this game is 41. Green Bay comes off their win uh, against Chicago. I guess they got their offense going a little bit. I mean, I guess. I mean, they don't terribly impress me. Tampa Bay doesn't impress me, though, either. I mean, Tampa they have Bay's offensive defense line is issues. really good. Green Bay's defense was supposed to be really good. Mike Evans isn't playing this week. He got yeah. suspended for that brawl where he came kind of off the bench and shoved Marcus Lattimore, who they have history together. Um, if you're betting, I'd stay away from this one. Me too. I'm going first. Go okay. ahead. Packers. I never do it. I, I, I fucking I, I, never do it. I hate it. That's where I I'm hate going it. too. I think there's too many questions. Like, I want to smash that beer over my head that you just threw right there for picking yeah. the Packers. No, I, I'm, I'm picking the Packers on this one. Too. I am thoroughly unimpressed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Their I told you this. Terrible. I told you this. Tom Brady, age, offensive yeah. line problems. He's, he should have retired. And weapon retired. problems. I yeah. mean, Mike Evans is not going to play. Maybe they get Chris Godwin back. I don't know. I mean, Brashad Perriman caught the crucial touchdown in New Orleans for the te- for the for them to win that game. They're lacking playmakers. Fournette's there. Blah blah blah. Um, I'm gonna take the Packers. I I think they're a work in progress, if you will. Yeah. I think that Aaron Rodgers will find a way to get Christian Watson, draft pick Romeo Dobbs, draft pick this year, involve more and try to build that chemistry. We'll all get together Saturday night and smoke some weed. They'll be good. No, it, no, it's hallucinogens. That, that, that's Aaron's choice of, of mushrooms. Of drugs, whatever. Will. All right, a I'm not going to get myself tangled in that. We're both on Green Bay to win. The, I think they're going to win this game outright, frankly. But uh, Sunday Night Football. Finally, I know it's been a long time. We're on to Sunday Night Football. The San Francisco 49ers travel to Denver. Uh, San Francisco's two point favorite out in Denver. Uh, over under again in this game is 46. Um, San Francisco one one. They come off their win against Seattle at home. The big storyline there is that Trey Lance obviously is out for the year now with his fractured ankle, fibula, everything else. Needs surgery. Jimmy Garoppolo is a quarterback, proven commodity, if you will. I've used that word a couple times now. I mean, they're a more stable team. I don't think they have the same ceiling that they had, but I think they're 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 they went from their floor to their floor row rows. 
Um, I don't know what the hell you're fucking talking about. Well, if Trey Lance ends up being a great player, their ceiling is here in regards to Super Bowl. Okay, so. But with Garoppolo. With I mean, a limited the sample we here. have, he didn't look great against you guys, the Bears. And then he broke his ankle on what, the second series? The dude can't throw a pass accurately. I mean, that's proven. He's not playing, though. It's Garoppolo's he's team. He's fine. And They're lucky they kept Garoppolo. And Garoppolo's in the driver's seat, and he's going to make a lot of money for San Francisco because he's going to hit all those incentives. Dude ain't coming back. San Francisco's got a good team. I'm picking them on this. I like it. I mean, Garoppolo. And Just the, because Denver's coach is an idiot. Oh, my God. We're going to talk about that. That's fun. That's fun to talk about. Uh, this show's wildly long, but that's fine. Um it's fine if you're still watching. San Francisco. Um, well, let, let, this show's running really long. Let's talk about the flubs in regards to the coaching decisions in Denver. Um, and the one I really want to talk about, and there's all kinds of clock management problems with Nathaniel Hackett, who is a new head coach at Denver. Um, so much that the crowd has started counting down, like, the play clock. Yeah, no during. shit. Wait, because you can't see it on all the freaking monitors but keaton and i my, one of my sons were out here watching this this game and then it's it's a field goal game right now it's like nine six or something like that i think they're trailing uh denver is and they attempt a 54 yard field goal brendan mcmanus i think is the name of the, the denver kicker he hammers it through the up well hold on wait didn't they do this previously hey well hold on let me tell my story hammers it through the uprights like hammers it like three quarters of the way up the uprights Hammers it. Unfortunately, there was a delay of game because Nathaniel Hackett has problems with decision making, right? So they're going to back him up five yards. You know what Hackett did? Put the offense back out of there? He punted. He punted after the field goal kicker because, I mean, the whistle blows, but you know how they snap the ball and the field goal kicker is going to kick the fucking ball, right? He's going to kick it. He hammers it through the uprights. Like, hammers it through the uprights. Five more yards, he puts out the punt team. And Keaton and I are both looking at each other. Are you insane? Because... That ball cleared the uprights by like 15 yards, easily. Okay. Like okay. easily. Like, um, there's a lot I'm of on unrest. San Francisco. There's a lot of unrest in Denver. San Francisco is minus two out in Denver. I am not. I like Russell Wilson. I like them to rally. Yeah. I like the crowd. I like the fact that minus night, two. I like the fact that the crowd is going to be way lubed up. It's a night game. Yeah, I'm well, going to take would. Denver to lose up game. or toked up. Doesn't matter. All of that. Colorado, we love you. Yeah. All right. The, uh, the shit on the sidewalk's going to win in this game. Monday Night Football. We're, oh. fi we're finally on to it. Dan hates the fact that he sees who all the time. NFC East on the, on the TV all the time. Yeah, no, this, this is garbage game. Garbage Gar game. Garbage game. The game Cowboys gar against the Giants. How is this a Monday Night Football game? Garbage. In Garbage. A, NFC East rivalry game. The Dallas Cowboys travel to the Meadowlands to play the Garbage. New York Giants. Giants are two and a half point favorites in this game. They uh, blocked out. Twice. The over under is 39 and a half. The Dallas Cowboys suck. Dallas. They blow. They come off a win against Cincinnati, where the game they were not supposed to win. They were touchdown dogs. They won the game. I have a question for you, though. Why does Dallas' offense look better with Cooper Rush and Dak Prescott? Because it Dak, did he ain't on that Sunday. Good. He, I, they, they were forced into paying him that Are much. they missing anything with Cooper Rush being a quarterback no. instead of Dak Prescott? No, you have two freaking running backs that can run the ball. Yes, and that would be Ezekiel and Troy Pollard. Yes! Who, Troy Pollard, if you ask me, is the more explosive of yes. the two. Yes, totally. Sure. And, and I mean, I funny. think you got to hand the baton eventually to Troy Pollard. Um, and you do, you. but you paid Ezekiel a shit ton of money. But still, he's he's very good. I it is a 2-0 oh, New no. York Giants right now sitting atop that NFC. They came off their win against Carolina. It wasn't a pretty win. It was 19-16 to 16 or something like that. I don't know what it was. I mean, obviously... The first week, they went down to Tennessee, and Saquon Barkley ran like crazy. Uh, they struggled to run the ball against Carolina in their defense. But what's going to happen this game, Dan? Giants minus two and a half. I, I, I'm actually taking the fraudulent America's team on this. I'm not. I'm taking the New York Giants. 
Get out of here. It's the crowd. It's Monday Night Football. It's the whole thing. I mean, there's yeah. going to be celebrities Mike there. Parsons, I think it's going to have mean, a big game. Who? No. Who? The, who? Mike? Who's going to big no, game? No, I said Micah. What's his name? Micah Parsons? Yeah. Oh, Is that okay. his name? Maybe the best defensive player in that. Football. I call it TJ Watt. It may be Micah Parsons. I don't think it's Aaron Donald anymore. I think he passes the torch, if you will. Um, TJ Watt's hurt. Micah Parsons is an athlete Wait. stud. TJ Watt? What are you throwing him in for? He plays for the fucking Steelers. He does, but I think he's one of the top three defensive players in the National Football League. He's, uh, oh, you're not talking him. about this game. I'm not. I Wait, I'm on the Giants minus two and a half. You're going to take America's team? No. The fraudulent America's team. The fraudulent America's team. All right. That's the entire slate of the National Football League. We do have elephant picks coming right now, which means our best bets on the week. And then we have a bonus college yeah. game, which I probably should just scrap because the show is so long. Dan, do you have it picked out? San Francisco. Really? Yes. And I picked Denver in the game. Yep. I'm surveying the board. Oh, shit. You said you had that done. I think Baltimore is a way better team than the limited offense in New England. I don't That's care what Dan too. thinks about Bill Belichick being the GOAT, maybe, of coaching. I don't care. I don't care. Their team sucks on offense. I think they're okay on defense. I think Baltimore is pissed off about their the way they blew that game at home against the Fins, and they're going to blow out. The New England Patriots. I love that game. That's my elephant pick. All right, one really quick. <coughs> Jeez, a lot of talking. Uh, bonus college football pick, SEC battle. It is the SEC East game, and it's important. I mean, the Florida Gators travel to Tennessee, Rocky Top. Uh, Florida's ranked 20th. Tennessee's ranked 11th. Uh, Florida's 2-1. Uh, Tennessee's 3-0. Tennessee was on our board before, which is kind of like weird, the fact that that happened. But uh, Florida comes off barely beating USF, which is my – one of my, my father-in-law, Bobby's alma mater. My wife went there for a bit. I mean, that's a team they're supposed to blow out. Um, unfortunately, our Akron football team got paid to go to Tennessee. They lost, I want to say, 53 to nothing. They're a very down program, if you will. Um, Did they cover? <laughs> no. No, I think it was 43. Uh, it was 53 to nothing. Um, I love Tennessee's quarterback. Uh, Herndon is his name. Uh, Richardson is the name of the quarterback where, you know, he had a great game opening week and they, they came out with a win. Uh, he didn't show so well. There was a, a pick issue with Kentucky when they played in the SEC. Uh, Tennessee's minus 10 and a half. Is this game going to be close or no. is Tennessee going to blow them out? I'm taking Tennessee. I'm not. I think Florida finds a way to keep this under the number. Um, I, I, I pumped up Tennessee the whole time. I still think it's an SEC battle. I mean, and those things are tough. So I'm going to go ahead and take the points. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I know it's go an rounds! incredibly long show. Uh, I greatly appreciate listening, viewing. We will be back next week to do it all again. Thanks.